call the regular meeting of the City Council of the City of Ramses Pass, February 1st, 2016. If everyone would please rise for the invocation. Dear Father, we come before you today to evening we thank you my father for the blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us my father we ask that you continue your blessing upon our citizens our our visitors to this uh, that come visit us in Aransas Pass we ask my father above all that you guide us the city council that we make the right decisions for our city that we consider all the facts and from there draw what is best for, for everyone we ask you continue blessing upon us this we ask in Jesus name Amen Amen. Amen. Can you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moving on to agenda item three, presentation by the Aransas Pass Chamber of Commerce, Rosemary Vega. Uh, Vicki, I'm Rosemary, I'm from the Chamber of Commerce. For those that don't know me, Vicki's passing around a handout on sugary. I already presented that in, in August, but I'm here tonight for the um, I put on here for a request for the use of the grounds because I need to start marketing, and it's part of what we do every year is permission to use the grounds. Is your microphone on? Okay, it's just for the balance in the budget for the police department of twenty-five thousand. Last year, um, we we were allowed the police department for twenty-five thousand and public works, which was between five and six thousand um, dollars. We paid that part for the public works because we. We did well, and we want to try to make an effort to try to cover some of our own costs instead of putting it on the city. So we absorbed that cost of the uh, public works. So this year, we're only asking for the allowance in the police department. Eric and I are confident that that's a good number to go with. If it goes over that amount, we're going to go ahead and pay that out of the chamber's uh, funding. But I don't think we're on there right now for a motion. I think we're just no. on here for presentation. Yeah. So I just thought I'd let you all know because I think we have to come back okay. again. <laughs> So you can review those if you have any questions. I can. I'm happy to answer them if you want to say until next time. I can answer them next time. Good. Good. All right. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Um, board and commission's appointment: A. Aransas Pass Municipal Development District, and B. Zoning Board of Adjustments. We have one application. Yeah, for MDD, we just have the one, Terry Stansberry. I'll make a motion we approve Terry Stansberry for the MDD. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Terry Stansberry. Zoning Board of Adjustments, we have just Byron McLaughlin. I'll make a motion we approve. Okay, hold I, uh, I know you have a, a uh, application in front of you uh -huh. for uh, appointment to the Board, board of Adjustment. Uh, I'm asking the council to table that to the next meeting. I need to personally contact this gentleman. I've heard from other members that the gentleman is maybe ill and I don't know if you'll be able to to serve, so I'd like to make a personal contact with this gentleman okay. before we so I'm requesting it for council table to the next meeting. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion. We table the motion to, for the zoning board of adjustment. All right. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. <clears throat> All right, we're going to move um, our executive session item, item 16, up right now before citizens' comments. So we're going to recess into executive session 
as for sharp chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code. And we'll reconvene in a minute.
All right, we're going to reconvene uh, the executive session. Um, A and C, no action. Uh, what is the pleasure of the council on B? I make a motion that we authorize the chief of police to grant a waiver for residency requirement for health and medical circumstances to the sex offender residency ordinance pending preparation of an amended ordinance. I second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, moving on to citizens' comments. Please, when you come up to the mic, uh, three minutes, name, give your name and your address. Do we have any people that wish to? Oh, there he is. My name is Farrell Smith, and I live near Memphis, Texas. But my question is, as a point of clarification, does any discussion that I'm trying to make on behalf of E and J Record Service on the record ordinance is it timely now or after y'all bring it up? Uh, you could uh, speak when we get ready to. Come up to the agenda item. The agenda. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm still waiting for a clean copy of the ordinance, and the chief is accommodating me in the near future with that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Good evening. Tim Dollar with TJ the show show. I, I want to clarify if, if I'm supposed to speak now or do you want us to wait till we talk about the annexation? Yeah, you could. Alan? Good. Either one. Either, either way. We, we have a lot to, to talk about, <coughs> about the annex. Okay. So do you want yeah, to wait could, till y'all bring it up? Sure, sure, because this is just, you only get three minutes on your citizen's comment. I think it's going to take more than three minutes. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is that it? Coming Gore, 326 South Atlantic Street. I am a concerned Aransas past citizen, and I saw a letter to the editor in the progress last week that concerned me a little bit. It appeared as if it was inviting citizens to come to Aransas Pass Moose Lodge on this Saturday to participate in a petition drive, which would result in a declaration of no confidence against the city manager. That's what it appears from the article. It gives a lot of information, but down near the bottom of that paragraph, it also says, it further states that there will be information on how to register to vote. I just want the citizens aware of the fact that the Moose Lodge, the organizers of this event came to the Moose Lodge and they asked for an event to register people to vote. That was approved by the Lodge Board and also went up the line to the state representatives for the Lodge. The largest charter could be pulled if there were other events that appeared to be uh, either political or petition signing. So I want the public aware and you folks aware and the press aware that it was approved for this purpose only and they can hand out information. They cannot have an information meeting. They cannot do a petition or recall or whatever, okay? These organizers were told, not once but twice, by the launch that no political rallies or anything that resembles a political rally or petition signing could be allowed. So the purpose was only for voter registration. 
This has been passed on to the Moose uh, governor who is investigating it, and if in fact it turns out that that was not the purpose, that there's a hidden agenda there, that meeting will be canceled. And it's not being canceled because it's voter registration. It has nothing to do with politics. The Moose Lodge could lose their charter. Okay. We would rather cancel that event than have some sort of a ruckus going on that we have to call in the police. Someone has already contacted the news media, and apparently there is one TV station that was planning to come to this voter registration event. <clears throat> it it kind of, we're not sure what's going on. I just wanted to know and let you know that this is not what it's, it indicates in the paper with the letter to the editor. It is supposed to be a voter registration, and that's what it will be if, in fact, it is held. Thank you. And the newsletter came out. The calendar shows the Moose Lodge from 11 to 6 on Saturday is a voter registration. So for your information, do with it whatever you want. Thank, Thank you. Hope. you. Thank you, Hope. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, I'm going to close citizens' comment. Moving on to item six, consent agenda. All of the following items of the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless the council member so request. If a discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> All right. Item seven, update on the status of the industrial district agreements in the proposed 2725 annexation area and request council direction to staff to prepare an ordinance and or associated documents required to enact the annexation of the area along FM 2725 south of the existing city limits of the city of Aransas Pass, Texas. Anybody Good wish to? Good afternoon, Mayor Council. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Go. Anybody wish to speak? Dan Jolly with TJ's Machine Shop, 1862, FM Road 2725. Good evening again. Uh, first of all, how many people are here from 2725? Just to make sure that you know how many. Uh, I need to, we need to clarify. She said that, uh, that uh, we are still pursuing the industrial, but she, she, the last time I talked to her, it's really hard to talk to her. <laughs> you can talk to us. She's in the class. That uh, there were going to be two districts. Gulf Marine and, and Redfish Bay will be in the ones like the big dogs, and then the rest of us would be in the other one. I didn't hear any of that. Are we still pursuing that? That's still with the council. That's still with the attorneys are trying to hash out in terms of classification and in terms of the, the verbiage and the industrial district agreement. So we're not voting on an annexation tonight, then? No. No. 
Okay. No. So, so, well, see, that, that clarifies a lot. We, we've been sitting around here all not wondering when we're going to be annexed tonight. No. You know, and, and that's what I didn't think so either, but, you know. So, now, what is the time limit? Are, are we going to have a meeting with the regular businesses besides Gulf Marine and Redfish Bay? Because there's other, other businesses out there. Are we going to have an agreement with, you know, have a meeting together with us to discuss? Mr. Dollar, the only thing that's, the only thing that's preventing a meeting with all of the other industries is I need the attorneys to hash out what the language is going to be. And then I can bring you something that is a point of discussion. Right now, things are going back and forth. So I hate to get you guys excited over something that will ultimately end up changing. So what do we do? Well, Mr. Jolly, let me tell you that we're almost we're almost uh, there with the final uh, verbiage. Should have that done in the next day or two. But are we are we getting close to the, like like what we've been in for the last eighteen years? Yes. We, we've had an industrial agreement for the last eighteen years. Yes. <clears throat> are we getting? Is that is that what we're going to go back to? With those with those that will agree to it, yeah. Okay. Does everybody know what what that was eighteen years ago? See, does anybody anybody up here in this council meeting know anything about what we agreed to? And I was part of it 18 years ago. Other than they were supposed to pay, what, 20%? Yeah. Well, no, I think. 20%. I've, I, well, okay, we'll, we'll stay at 20. I think it started at 15% for eight years of the tax rate. Then after eight years, we went up and we had another agreement for 10 years, and then it went up to 20%. But I'm not going to quabble about that. But it was only property tax and improvements in, this, in the discussion right, right there. See, there's there's a disagreement because we're trying to say, well, all these companies owe back taxes too, which is clogging up the, the mechanism for us to go forward. Mm -hmm. So we need to get straight. And back then, now I, w I went through my records, of course, I've thrown some of my records away, but I went back to two, 2008, your tax rate was 0.58 and 20% of that. So. The people that oh we have, we need to sit down and, and really hash it out to exactly how much is owed so that we can go ahead and proceed and then I totally I, I want it all written down so that it's understandable to everybody so that in 18 years from now when my son's up here <laughs> that he's not having to say did y'all remember what you said. <laughs> Okay, so so I, I take it for right now, we're just supposed to sit back and wait. When are you coming back in town? <laughs> I'm, I'm not really gone. I'm still working. Well, well, it's hard, it, like I said, it's hard to meet with all all the businesses. I've I, I've gone over myself. I've talked to four or five different businesses out there, and 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 we, we've talked about this industrial group and they all agree with it totally but we need to be clarified yeah, Mr. Mr. Jolly and Mr. Govia have been very 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 instrumental in getting folks to even understand what an industrial district is and understand where it fits so yes Mr. Jolly you deserve absolutely <coughs> for that okay and if we can get everybody to agree the plan is industrial district okay well, you know there are folks out there who obviously owe money and that's a different discussion right Okay, one other question. Are we going to drop the residents? They do not qualify under industrial district definition. So they're, they're, they're free. Correct. I, I, I mean, because I think that's, that's what's fair. That's, that's the way it's been. It's just the businesses, we're the ones that are paying, and all the residents, they just keep going on like they've been going. I believe that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? <coughs> My name is Michael Morrow. I live in Rockport, so, uh, but I'm representing Kellogg Brown and Root. We have a 
small maintenance yard that would be in the industrial district, has been in the industrial district for the last 18 years. And we are current in our payments to the city. Um, I heard tonight that there's been some back and forth on the agreement. And that normally would indicate to me that some of the people in the industrial district have seen the draft agreement. I would like to see it also. Sure. We are apparently among the 10% that hasn't uh, been able to see that. Um, we are very much in favor of a continuation of the industrial agreement. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mara, the city secretary can provide you with a copy of that. Thank you. Uh, Paula Stone, my husband and I have property on 2725. I guess I want an additional clarification because um, we, our property is 11 years old. Uh, it's never even knew that there was an industrial district, but I feel like because it is a commercial building uh, that fits in that category. So, um, and for the taxes that are on our tax bill have all been paid 100% at full value. So I want some kind of understanding because we do want to be a part of it because if we're, you know, we just haven't, I, I guess I just want to be clarified where those people who you didn't even know about a tax zone for 18 years, you know, I want to know where we are with that. I want clarification. And I, like I said before, I, I say it again, I know two pieces of property, you know, one for sure with a large tax bill, it's, considered, I'm pretty sure it's considered commercial property or industrial, even though it's underwater, you can't find the owners to those people. So I want to know when you say, you know, 80% you now, if everybody that you can physically locate is okay, you know, to agree to this, or do you have to have every single person that owns property? Because I'm telling you, you can't find them. You're not going to be able to find them because I know we can't find one set of owners. And the county can't even repossess the property, okay? Or whatever you want to call it. But I just want additional clarification for those people that did not know that there was a tax zone out there that they could have, made, could have been a part of because nothing was ever offered to some of us that bought and built since 2004, I guess, or five, that's when we built. So, Paula, like if you didn't sign an agreement, then there's no tax due owed. What well, we're referring to, there are property owners and there are But is that going to hinder anything? Is that going to hinder anything? No. no. Is that going to hinder anything? No. no. Okay. That's yeah. why I want some additional clarification on that whole concept. No. Because there's a, there's a lot of, in my opinion, I'm just throwing it out there. We need to get really on the ball about communication. I'll be honest. I'm really bad. I just kind of read the paper, you know, out here. And if I, if I doesn't get my attention, uh, then I probably don't do too much about it, you know. But when it starts getting into your pocketbook, you're talking about an annexation in, you know, in an area that I'm concerned that you can't provide ever you know, good sources to, then you know, that gets to be a different thing. Because I do care about the city of Aransas Pass, and I really, really think we got to get the city in good order before we reach out to these outlying areas. And by the way, I will say this. Thank you for your service. Because you're right, I don't want your job. You'll never have to worry about it. Okay? Because I am not running for city council. But ever. But I will say that. Thank you for your, your service. Thank you, Ms. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That's it. Um, what is the pleasure of the council? Oh. Amelia Segovia, 1386 FM 2725. And primarily, Paula brought a, a good point and um, the clarification. You were saying something about 80 to 90 percent and everybody is going to be on board. How will the people that are on the east and west side or that area 2725 know if you're in that category? Will they be notified separately? Yes, we're going to have to have individual, we're going to have to have a meeting, probably at the Civic Center with everybody involved and find out who falls in the what category. But I explained, I don't know if you heard with Mr. Donald, the residential does not qualify under an industrial district definition. Okay. So they're going to be left out completely. Okay, very good. All right, thank you. All right. <coughs> 
That's it. Uh, what is the pleasure of the council? I make a motion that we direct staff to prepare an ordinance and hold a special meeting on February the 8th, 2016 at 7 o'clock in City Hall. February the 8th? Yes, next Monday. Is that a vote or just a vote? A vote. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, moving on, consider an act on awarding the RFP for the City of Aransas Pass official newspaper. Make a motion that we approve the Coastal Bill Herald, the Rangers Pass official newspaper. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion carries. C. Consider an act on the request from the Aransas. Do we have a do we have any documentation on the agreement? What was agreed upon? We have to draft the agreement after council gives me the um term. Are we talking about the loan? The, the little league. The loan. Yes. Do do they still need the money after after the donation that was made to them? From the chamber, do they still there, need the money? Auction and Alan Samuels, we raised ten thousand dollars, and so I, I'm assuming that's why they're not here right now because they don't need that money. No. And nobody's here from the Little League, right? Mm -hmm. No, I think we've covered them already. I think they're good with what they got. Yeah, we just pass on this. So do we just need to pass? Just pass. Or should we still contact the them or pass on? Okay. Pass. Well, they did not reach out to us to pull the item. Uh, obviously, the Little, Bull, the Little League uh, Board President and member of staff and saw the agenda. They didn't ask us to pull the item, but if they're not present, then I would suggest council um, either deny the request or take the request. I just pass on it. If they want to put it back on, that's up to them. Okay. I don't think they're going to need it. All right. I'll pass on the <coughs> agenda item C. D, consider an act on approving the lease agreement with the Aransas Pass Little League. We have to pass on that. They're not here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sylvia? Correct. Um, the lease is just uh, verbatim to last year. It is um, $1 a day, uh, take care of the interior fields, et cetera. It's the same as last year. Do we need to pass on it, or can, can we make a motion on this? The terms. I'll make a motion that we pass on it until we have a representative present. Okay. You want to table? I want to table. Make a motion to table C and D. Second. Well, you've already acted on C. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, D. D. Okay. 
Okay. All those Second. in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Did we have to vote on the seat? We just passed. Well, Uh, agenda item E, consider an act on the request for the donation from Rock the Dock in the amount of $7,500. Um, the next two items are Rock the Dock's donation of the debt. Uh, you have some information that was provided in your council meeting, and I believe uh, Mr. Moore should be in the audience to present the council. Yes. Shh. Sure. Showtime, Mike. Thank you all very much for allowing me this time. This being our fifth year, <coughs> excuse me, with Rock the Dock, and all of you have, most of you have been there. We bring in over 8,000 people every year to come look at boats, visit our property, visit our city. They spend time here. We average, I think last year we figured 145 rooms. We didn't have enough in a ran this past because of the fire. So we had people staying all over. Um, the boat dealers do very well. Chris at Chris's Marine. I mean, Chris is just static. He is, this has really grown into something. I wish I could tell you, I, I had a phone call today from an insurance company. This is a very large insurance company. Hopefully in 2017, we can put something together. But even with that being said, the people we draw every year for the hot tax money is just exciting. And it gets bigger and bigger every year. It's the same with the vets fishing with vets. Last year was, again, it was just awesome to see the vendors out there, and it's going to be bigger this year also. And I hope that you all will continue to support us because we feel like this is really growing our city and bringing people to our community, not only at our place, but all over the city. I mean, when I talk to Ram, his restaurant is always busy. APB is packed. There, everyone in our community, in, excuse me, in our community benefits from these events. So I hope that with that being said, that you'll continue to support us and keep us in the right direction, keep us growing. So on the vets fishing, is this the second year for the vets? That second okay. year for the vets. And yes, the fourth sir. for Wait. Rock the Dock? The, yeah, fifth. the fifth for oh, Rock good. the Dock. Five years and growing. Wow, we're getting old. So, and like I said, we figured it, and just the Rock the Dock, around 40,000 people in the last four years between the Rock the Dock and a couple other events we have. And on the papers that I gave you last year on the city's uh, uh, website, those are all the events we had last year bringing in people from all over the state of Texas to fish events here. I really believe it's beneficial. Wow. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mike. Alan, can we do uh, E and F together? Yes. Uh, what is the pleasure of the council? Well, I want to make a motion that we um, approve the request for a Rock the Dock of the amount of 7500 and the uh, request for the vets fishing with vets in the amount of 7500 Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Consider an act on the Final report by the Charter Review Ad Hoc Committee. Sylvia? Uh, Mayor Council, this was the result of each of your appointments for doing the charter uh, line by line, asking staff for some research going back to the of the discussion. We came up with two items that the, uh, the committee is recommending. One of them is to Article 7, Section 11, Contingent Appropriation. Uh, as you are aware, our bond rating improved once we stipulated to the bond council that we were going to put aside $250,000 each year. The charter that we have currently written stipulates an amount not to exceed 3%. And the staff asked the Charter Review Committee to change that in an amount not less than 3%. I'm going to get some flack from staff, but it really is a way to develop our reserve so that uh, future councils and administrations really must take action to transfer anything out of reserve. It helps improve our credit rating and it helps set us up for times of emergency. So that was section 11. The next section is um, uh, Article 9, Finance Administration. Right now, the disbursement of funds is the city manager, city secretary, and municipal court judge. I ask to be removed from that specifically because the finance director cuts checks. There, there's a, there could be a uh, misconception, misconstruction of the city manager giving direction to the finance director to 
we always have a checks and balances. And so there is not one person who is, um, you know, ruler of the loop, so to speak. And then uh, the committee has asked us to look uh, looking forward to make some municipal code amendments. Um, they asked about putting them in the charter, but they are not appropriate for the charter. One of them is the formation of public-private partnerships that would help us, um, you know, get things under control, possibly develop a, uh, a residential corporation that would allow us to, to do residential construction. They want us to add some things on track and accounting that we follow gas rules, which we are, but we want it uh, codified in the code. And then also training requirements for elected public officials. Uh, right now, you're required to attend an open meeting training with PML, but they felt something a little more substantial um, on not only ethics and open meetings, but also just basic city government. And those are all trainings that are offered by PML. So we're going to come back to the council in the next couple of months on those code updates in the municipal code. So at this point, council has the opportunity to decide going with the uh, charter review committee on the proposed changes or not, or adding some of their own. If, Sylvia, if, if approved, this will be put on the next uh, ballot on the next election? Yes, correct, the May election. And we are here up, at, we are up against the time clock, I believe, Mary, the date is... Right. Uh, mid February in order for it to get posted on the election. Okay. Any discussion? Well, I make a motion that we approve the recommendations from the uh, uh, the committee. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, uh, public agenda item 9A, consider an act on a three-year routine service agreement with Liberty Tire Recycling for tire recycling. Okay. Mayor and Council, uh, what you have before you is a agreement, service agreement with Liberty Tire Recycling uh, is so we can start getting rid of all the tires that we have in our landfill. They, uh, uh, our first round of getting rid of these tires will be about 400 tires, which will run us about $1,200, and uh, and then probably continue on. This is the continuing effort of trying to clean up the uh, transfer station and get it looking a little bit better than what it is. So we're asking that you uh, approve the the recycling. Service. Thank you. Hey, Sylvia, does this also include uh, moving the price up too? No? I'm sorry, moving the price up? Yeah, it's at $2.50 per tire, and then you have a. No, like, the, 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 this is just for the service agreement. There is no proposal to increase, right now the fees, the tires are free, uh -huh. up to a R20. Uh, residents of Aransas Pass can bring tires. It's gonna cost the city $2.50 per tire, plus a uh, rotting fee, plus uh, a percentage of what the revenue, and we estimate it's gonna end up costing the city about three dollars per tire okay okay so that's something this council may consider down the road whether they want to do a fee for dropping off tires or whether that would even be appropriate since we've got a lot of tires out in the city bring them in free and just another cost the city may, may okay. want to absorb okay any questions when will this start if we approve it? Sir? When will we start coming in and taking it? Uh, we've got it set for the 15th okay. so that we can work with them and try to say, okay, bring the trailer, pack up whatever tires you can, 400 people, mm -hmm. and we can start working. Is there more than 400 out there? Yes, sir. 
double that or okay. jingles. Give or take a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, what is the pleasure of the council? Well, I make a motion that we approve the service agreement with Liberty Tire Recycling to dispose of the tires at the transfer station. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, public safety item. Uh, police uh, consider an act on approving revisions to the city code of ordinance part Two, chapter 28, Article 5, Section 28 through 90, and 28 through 100. B, consider an act on approving the revision of the City Code of Ordinance, Part 2, Chapter 9, Article 3, Fireworks. Thank you, Council. Uh, yes, the first one that you had mentioned there refers to the uh, contentious uh, record ordinance. And Mr. Smith is here and would like to speak at the, the Council of Grant, please. May it please the Honorable Council and Mr. Lawrence, I uh, anticipate that it will be in everyone's best interest to table this particular consideration of the subject ordinance. One, uh, Mr. Ed Garza has been working with the chief, and I have, but he's in San Antonio in litigation, and now that we have the new city ordinance uh, that spells out exactly what uh, is proposed, it will be easier for us to better accept the portions that are agreeable to is subject to y'all's consideration in both and yet there are several of them of the provisions uh, that you mentioned that contravene state law and federal law and I believe Mr. Lawrence has indicated that the current ordinance is antiquated and needs revision a replacement and we agree but it's there are several things like extraterritorial jurisdiction and the whether or not the council wants to let in other men, competing businesses that do not have a yard or business within the city limits that I think can be worked out with the chief. He has been very receptive to work with us, but if I know that I think it's set for this reading and another reading in maybe two weeks, and uh, I would recommend on behalf of Ian J. Record that we be allowed to take the ordinance I just received and work with the chief. The other thing is that I anticipate Mike Wellborn, our DA, to let me know whether or not he is going to act as a approved representative on the Attorney General opinion, which would be moved if we can work out the details uh, in the next two weeks and then it could go back on the agenda with the benefit of negotiation, compromise, clarification through communication and give y'all something that uh, I know the Roadrunner Record Service is here I do not represent them, but in talking with the owner, she said that, you know, she would like to be heard, but right now, I don't think most of the owners have the clarified, clean ordinance to know exactly where we can 
work it out with the chief subject to y'all's approval. Can y'all give us two weeks to do that? Uh, we've actually, this has dragged on since about October of sure. last year. I've been in uh, constant communication with all the record services through the means that they've provided me. Uh, I know Mr. Smith is saying that he did not have a copy of the ordinance, but his co-counsel showed up to our meeting this past week, the 11th hour that they arranged with a copy of the finalized uh, ordinance. And he also made it quite clear that uh, we've basically come to an impasse that uh, on agreeing on what to agree. Uh, so it, it, it's inaccurate to say that you did not come prepared. You have been well informed from the get-go. Uh, the other thing is there's been no mention uh, about uh, Wellburn being involved or any other type of uh, decisions to be made. It's, in my opinion, it's another stall tactic to drag this on for another few months. I think that we have all the information that is, is necessary here. And I think that it's in the best interest of our community and those who unfortunately see themselves having their vehicles towed to know that there's a competitive process out there to keep the cost of those folks down. Because as it is right now with the current ordinance council, uh, they, the local services are basically monopolizing and setting high prices and to avoid doing like uh, Corpus Christi or Noises County, uh, to avoid setting caps on prices, we want them to have the luxury a free enterprise in this community, which has been stalled by improper ordinance for so long, in my opinion. In response uh, to the chief's comments, uh, I had a rough draft for at least three weeks of leave we got from the city manager, but there was substantial interlineation of the various sections and it wasn't totally clear to me or Mr. Garza what the final draft would look like after it was all connected. But the chief is right. Uh, it's in my client's best interest and presumably the community to spend two weeks to get the right ordinance. We don't want to go to court. We don't need the Attorney General. We just need to follow up with the Chief and then let y'all make the decision. And I can present, uh, as they are in our Exhibit C, to the City Manager, to Mr. Lawrence, uh, the complaints that my client has. But I think that most of them we can live with. It's the extraterritorial jurisdiction and what is fair competition for people that are outside of Rams' past and seemingly the council may want to protect the people that are in full compliance with all the prerequisites before they can run calls with their records or make storage uh, facilities available. But that will be part of what y'all would want to consider. I'm just asking for two weeks. And if we come to an agreement to present to y'all before, that would be speedy justice, I would think. And, and this thing really came to a head when Ed Garza and I started working with the chief about three weeks ago at the longest. He was only hired three and a half weeks ago by he and Jay, as I was, to do what we're doing right now. So please <clears throat> give us an opportunity to follow up on what we started and I promise we'll be here when you put us back on the agenda in two weeks or whatever it is uh, to get this thing resolved and let it be a blessing to the city and something that the record service people can live with. Thank you. Thank you.
Council, the, just to remind you, the last council meeting, uh, Mr. Garza requested an extension. I've made myself available both during hours and after hours. In fact, we had a meeting after hours the last time to try to resolve this. Okay. Uh, what is the pleasure of the council? Well, I make a motion that we approve the revisions to the City Code of Ordinances, Part 2, Chapter 28, Article 5, Sections 28 through 90 and 28 through 100. I second. We have a first and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those no, motion carries. Thank you, Council. The uh, next item was uh, an amendment to the fireworks ordinance. Uh, I don't know who it was, but somebody, a member of either the public community or across the state, reached out to us and said that uh, there's a new law on the books that says that we can no longer seize fireworks that are unpopped and packaged. I imagine that this stems from uh, places like Corpus, which would wait for a truck a fireworks truck to cross the highway and then they would stop and seize all the fireworks thousands of dollars worth of fireworks so I'm just basically updating the ordinance so that it's in accordance with state law and then we'll give directive to staff that we no longer seize basically unless they're unpackaged or uh, uh, they're actively popping or there's a court order that instructs our officers to seize the fireworks So this is just the update to the state Correct. law. Okay. To make us in accordance with state law. Okay. okay. What is the pleasure of the council? Well, I make a motion that we uh, approve the revisions to the city code ordinance part 11, chapter 9, article 3, fireworks. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> and Eric, you get agenda item 15. Okay, this is a quick, easy one. Racial profiling, the stats are in for year 2015. We've passed audit. Uh, we continue to use uh, our same auditor, Mr. or Dr. Del Carmen. Uh, this year, the Port of Corpus Christi actually funded for area law enforcement to participate with Mr. Del Carmen, uh, and he has been auditing us pretty regularly to keep them keep us in compliance. If you've seen the uh, Texas Department of Public Safety, Austin PD, all experiencing some huge problems. Uh, some of those issues we've found locally as well and we were able to remedy them uh, right away. But basically we were issued a clean bill of health by Dr. Del Carmen in our audit and our uh, stats are ready and have been reported to the state and I'm now reporting them to council as required. Thank you. There were no issues, just to mention, as far as racial profiling. How, how often do they audit you guys? Uh, right now we're audited uh, quarterly, and they are intensified audits as well. But we don't want to be in the situation uh, like Austin or DPS. I'm making Sylvia yawn. She says I talk too much. <laughs> We have a motion to adjourn. Oh, is that it? That's it. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries.
Where'd you come up with this name? Is that your cat's name? What's the deal? That's your cat's name. Okay. Oh my gosh. Well, wait.